Hello and thank you again for joining me for Scots United, where me and my team of Scots, who are also me, bring you the latest in television, movies, and pop culture. Now then, we are quickly approaching Halloween. Hope you have costume ideas in place, plans in place. Um, I kind of have my own plan. Margo is all set, um, she, uh, as far as, uh, as, as what she's told me. She's been sewing her little life away. Uh, so and I and I also hear from her that she has secured us a special guest for uh, our Halloween uh, show next week uh, before Halloween hits. So look forward to that. Don't know any more. She won't say so beyond that. There's a special guest that she has booked, um, and that I should be excited. So hey, so let's talk TV. There are still new shows rolling out. And one new show that recently debuted on HBO is Camping, starring Jennifer Garner. So let's go to Scott and see what he has to say about it. First impressions. I love Jennifer Garner. I know she's turned into the sort of like red book, good housekeeping, American mom figure for everybody, which is fine. I was a big Alias fan. I don't like seeing her like this. I don't like seeing her as this super tightly wound, desexualized, frigid, suffocating person. It makes me unhappy. Scott, do you feel like... Uh... That's not the first time, but seeing David Tennant, who I'm not a huge fan of as it is, doing an American accent, it's like, I don't know, seeing a bull with his balls cut off. It just seems wrong. Um, he is sort of a cuckold character in a way because he's married to the Jennifer Garner char character who's terrible, but I just feel like you lose so much of David Tennant when you take away his accent. Brett Gelman is hilarious. Bridget Everett is a genius. Uh, I don't understand why I don't like anybody yet. Is there potential that it might... The whole premise seems like it's going to be frustrated, and I don't know if that will blossom into humor, but at the moment, I don't find it funny. I find it mean. Jennifer Garner's character stealing everyone's foam mattresses from their, their tents before they get there, it's just like, in no way are, is the show setting us up to like her. And you don't like her because she's unlikable. And they have their kid along so that they get to be helicopter parents and be crazy. There must be some bright spots. Uh, Juliet Lewis is making a career now of just playing wackadoodle like manic pixie dream girls or dream women, I guess, at this point. Um, and hey, you know, I give her a lot of respect for being fully frontally naked in the first episode. But do we need that? And that's when I remember too. Oh, right, this is a Lena Dunham production. So of course they need to put nudity in it, which is fine. And I, I'm all for like having diverse nudity. Of course, none of the men were nude, but you know, whatever. Still, I just don't know what it really added, except to be like, she's the crazy one, she'll do anything, she's the wild card, she's gonna be the one that makes it difficult for Jennifer Garner's character, Catherine, to rein in everyone and keep them all at her schedules, but like when someone's like, when you're camping and someone says there's seven minutes left for, for breakfast, like it just, I feel like they already overplayed her whole type A, like intense, need to control everything, and I just, I love Jennifer Garner, I really, I want her to succeed. I think I might give this another episode to see if the charm builds, but I don't know, I really don't. Okay, well, definitely a harsh critique. Sounds like, though, he still might be sticking with it one more episode at least. Um, I get it, you know, Jennifer Garner is a darling. Um, it is really hard to make her unlikable, but it seems like they've done it. Margo, what do you think? Okay, let's talk the movie world. And, you know, A Star is Born is getting a lot of audiences, getting a lot of uh, reviews, and our own Scott went to see it recently. Hey, Scott. So, last night I went with my sister and we went to see A Star is Born. And... I have to say I'm impressed. Um, is it, you know, a perfect A++? No. Is it maybe a little draggy in the middle? Maybe, you know, 
Um, there's a lot of themes that Bradley Cooper is trying to kind of work into it, and they're there. Maybe there's a little too much sometimes, a little overstuffed, but uh, you know the timeline is a little bit questionable sometimes, but you kind of go with it. But I think that's sort of the point I felt coming away with it is just to go with it because you really do feel what they've discussed in interviews, that they, they just sort of came together as a group and as a unit and they trusted each other. The chemistry between Bradley Cooper and Lady Gaga is really great. You definitely come away that, that this movie was deeply personal for Bradley Cooper. Um, and honestly, you know, and I'm not the biggest Lady Gaga fan, you know, I think she's fine. Um, I've been more of a fan in the last few years of hers, but you just see her commitment to the role. And for both of them, some really nuanced, subtle, layered performances and moments that are really just heartbreaking and beautiful. Among a cast full of those kinds of performances, Bradley Cooper, definitely as a director, gave everyone moments that were really just you know, gorgeous. Sam Elliott by far has the lion's share of the supporting cast, but Dave Chappelle has a great scene. He only has really one scene, essentially, but it's a great scene. Uh, even Andrew Dice Clay, who's playing uh, Ali's father, uh, Lady Gaga's father, is everyone's good. Everyone's good. You love a movie when everyone's good in it, everyone contributes, and it really... And the, the, the quality of songs, there are several songs that they created for this, and I don't know that one isn't good. They all fit where they belong, and they're all uh, effective, and there's some really great ones, including the final song that really just uh, knocks, your, knocks your heart out, and, uh, and Lady Gaga does that. She is a star, and uh, thumbs up. It was really something. Well, that's all we have for this week. Join me next week when we will have our Halloween episode. I don't know what that means or what will happen. We will have, though, a special guest joining us. I'm keeping the rest. Well, I don't know the rest because Margo's keeping it a secret. But we will have a special guest, so join us then.